Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a walkthrough of my new samurai inspired design created with these images in Photoshop. And there's a lot of different tools and techniques that I'm going to be using in this video, so hopefully you find these helpful and can use them in your own work. So once I've built the scene, I'm going to be adding a variety of different effects to create the final design until I get this. This video is also sponsored by Envato Elements and we'll come back to them later. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, I created a new document, Portrait Orientation, and then opened up a 3D render of a woman by a swimming pool. I then used the pen tool to cut out the subject. And as you might imagine, this did take a little while, but because it's my main character, I really wanted to spend the time cutting out my subject properly. And we're definitely not going to pen tool the hair. So as you can see, I just went round the hair and we'll come back to that later. So down the leg, to the foot, and of course the toes. We can't forget the toes. Now this image is a JPEG. The great thing about JPEGs is you can actually save them and it will save that path with this file. So I won't ever have to cut out this subject again. I'm now using the path selection tool to select all of these inside paths. And then from the drop down at the top, I can subtract these from the shape just so they're knocked out. Now the path's all done, I can go to the paths panel, hold command or control and click the work path to make a selection. Add a layer mask to mask the selection. Give the layer a name and then scale this up and pop it in the center. Now I need some assets from this video sponsor, Invato Elements. Their platform has millions of assets for things like photos, illustrations, textures, icons, video, motion graphics, 3D, music, all with unlimited downloads, a commercial license for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. And there's a link below if you'd like to check them out. So now I'm on the Invato Elements site, I'm going to browse their 3D assets and do a search for a katana. A quick scroll down. And this is definitely the one I want, so I'm going to click this. I can then select View 360 Render, and then I can rotate this 3D model to any angle that I like and download this as a layered PSD or a PNG file. I'm going to select PSD and download this, and then let's open that PSD in Photoshop. I can now adjust the size, position and rotation and pop it on her back. Next, I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool to select the clothing here. I can hold Alt or Option and click to remove areas from the selection. Now that's looking pretty good, I can add a layer mask. Right click and select Convert to Smart Object. Give it a name and then right click and duplicate this layer. I'm going to select the main PSD as the destination. Click OK and this is now in the main document. So now I can press Command or Control T to use Free Transform to adjust the size and position. And then once I'm happy, go to Edit and Puppet Warp. I can now place pins on this clothing and then I can distort this so that it fits the subject's body. And you can see I pulled it out to the right a little bit just to simulate a breeze so it's blowing in the wind ever so slightly. There we go, looking good. Next I'm going to open up an image of a bottom and I'm rather lazily going to use the magic wand tool to see if I can make a decent selection and I can adjust the tolerance to capture more or less in that selection. I can then go to edit cut and then paste this into the main document, reduce the opacity to help with positioning and then bring that back up once it's done. Hold alt or option and add a layer mask to hide everything and then with a soft brush, brush everything back in, making sure not to go outside of the actual subject. And the reason I'm doing this is rather than trying to clone out the subject's original swimwear, I thought it would be easier to just give her a new bottom and then match the colors up. Now I'm right clicking the bottom layer and selecting create clipping mask so it's clipped to the subject. Now I'm going to add a color balance adjustment layer followed by a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to use these two adjustment layers that are clipped to the bottom to adjust the color because right now, as you can see, they don't really match up. And you can see me here releasing the clipping mask and just readjusting all of my layers so that these color changes only affect the bottom and not the subject as well. So you can see me here using the curves adjustment layer to adjust the contrast and then the red channel to adjust the color. I'm also going to add a levels adjustment layer to adjust this further. And you may have noticed that I actually got rid of the color balance adjustment layer because levels and curves did this just fine. Once the colors are all matched up, I can then use the brush tool to feather the edges of that layer mask. Now let's add some muscle definition. So with the lasso tool, I'm going to make a very quick selection here of some back muscles. Cut and paste this into the main document. 
and then use the same techniques to position this, adjust the colour and then puppet warp this so that it matches the subject. I can then hold Alt or Option and add a layer mask to hide everything and then just brush in a little bit of muscle definition in a few key places. I can then right click this layer, select blending options and then adjust the blend if sliders to blend the muscle and the subject together. Next I'm going to go inside the Samurai Smart Object, duplicate the layer and then go to select, select a mask. Click refine hair to get a nice head start and then I'm going to add a bright red solid colour adjustment layer and position this underneath. And you can see Refine Hair did a pretty good job and I'm now just using the brush tool to clean up any of these large areas that were left behind. And using the red background it helps create a nice contrast so I can see if I've done a good job. So I can now hide this, save and close and go back to the main document and I'm going to apply another puppet warp to the clothing and just refine this a bit further. I'm now going to use levels to adjust the clothing and the katana making both of these a little bit darker. Now I've got an image of some rocks. I'm going to go to select down to colour range, select the white, click OK and then cut and paste this into the main document. Scale it down and position it at the bottom and I'm going to do the same with this lovely lakeside sunset. And there we go, I have a naked subject with a sword, some cloth, standing on a rock looking at a sunset. Ah, it's all coming together. And with the sunset selected, go to filter, blur gallery and select tilt shift. And I can use this technique to add more depth to my scene. So areas of this image closer to the subject will be more in focus, areas further away will be more out of focus. Now I'm going to tinker with the levels for the rock itself, make this a bit darker also, and then adjust the colour balance for the sunset itself, making it a little bit more reddish and a bit more vibrant. Now I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer to the subject and use this to make the subject much darker because the light source coming from the sunset is in front of her so she would become silhouetted to some extent. I'm just using colour balance again to introduce more reddishness into the subject and now I have a vector image of a dragon tattoo. I'm going to adjust the size and position of this so it's on her left shoulder. Again use those blend if settings to blend this into the skin and then mask out certain parts of the tattoo so it feels like it actually wraps around her body. You can also adjust the blending mode for this if you'd like to try blending it with the skin in a slightly different way. Overlay does look quite cool but I switched back to normal for now and then I rasterized the tattoo layer and used the lasso tool to go around the main body of it and then just move it out of line slightly just so it feels like it wraps around the body more authentically. And then lastly just clipping this to the subject. Next I'm using an exposure adjustment layer to add highlights to certain parts of the subject. And now I'm going to do it again and make this even more intense and then do another pass on highlights around the subject. And this is one way you can do this, you can have one for softer highlights and then one for harder more intense highlights and the same goes for shadows as well. There we go, looking pretty good. This next bit is really cool so I went back inside the Samurai Smart Object, selected the subject itself, grabbed the lasso tool and then made a selection around the left leg. I can then cut this, paste it back in, reposition it and do the same for the right leg as well. So these are now on separate layers and I can adjust the angle of these and make it look like she is walking one foot in front of the other. So let's just drag that left leg layer underneath, there we go. And ideally I would have done this earlier in the process because now I have to adjust the puppet warp and any highlights and shadows that I've added. And you can see here puppet warp and masks don't get along so if you have this problem just convert it to a smart object again and reapply that puppet warp effect. There we go, lovely. Now holding command or control I can click on the layer's thumbnail to make a selection and then go to select, modify and contract. I'll set this to one pixel and then I can then go up to select, modify and feather and then feather it by the same amount. I can then add a layer mask and this will soften the edge of my subject ever so slightly which just makes it a bit more realistic. Now I'm going to take a moment to name some of these adjustment layers because as you can imagine this can get very complicated having exposure layer 1, 2 and 3. So my advice is to name them things that are either descriptive or something you'll remember. 
Again, I'm just going to go in and add some more highlights. You know, I was never really satisfied with the highlights on this one. I just kept going over it and over it again and again. And it's definitely worth trying to do this in as few adjustment layers as possible. Otherwise it can get really complicated and you'll want to pay attention to where your light source is as well. So in this example, it's the sun. So I have to think about which parts of the body are exposed enough that the sun would hit them and then cast light. How intense would that light be? Would it be subtle or more pronounced? These are the kinds of things that you need to consider. Now this next bit uses the same technique, but instead a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to go with a nice warm orange. Right click this layer and clip it to the subject as well. And then change the blending mode. This blends this over the subject in a variety of different ways. And I can use this technique to then brush in some of that warm light coming from the sun onto the subject. And at the moment it's probably a little bit too orange, but all of this is fully adjustable and I will adjust this later on. I'm now using a hue and saturation adjustment layer on the sunset itself, just to make it again a little bit more reddish. And I did come back to the tattoo in the end. I did go with that overlay blending mode and then brought down the opacity just so the tattoo is a little bit more subtle. Now I'm going to spend a minute just brushing in more light coming from the sun onto different parts of the subject all over her entire body, the clothing and the katana. Now it's time for another 3D asset, this time a candle. So again, I'm going to duplicate this into the main document and you can see I've already downloaded this at the correct angle. And I can then adjust the size and position of this, pop it on the end of the rock and then use things like levels and color balance to help blend this into the rest of the scene. Again, I'm going to use an exposure adjustment layer to make this darker and then introduce some highlights coming from the sun. I'm also going to add a layer mask to the candle and then use the brush tool just to soften those edges and essentially reshape the wax as well so it's looking just right. Okay, a few more minor adjustments to the exposure. Now I'm going to add a new layer and call it flame. Pick an orange color, select the brush tool and single left click. Although this isn't really a flame shape. So let's undo that, go up to the brush panel, increase the hardness so the flame isn't so soft, click to add again and then use free transform to stretch this up. I can now duplicate the layer and then adjust the hue and saturation to make this a bit more yellowy. And then scale this down, position it at the bottom and then play around with the blending modes. I did start with color dodge. Uh, as you can see, this doesn't really look ideal. So I repositioned this onto the wick and then changed the blending mode to linear dodge add. Now with the orange part of the flame selected, I can go to filter, down to distort and select ripple. Now I'm going to add another solid color adjustment layer, position this above everything this is going to be used to add a glow from the flame onto the candle itself. So I'm using the overlay blending mode, inverting the mask, and then with the brush tool and white selected, just brushing this in around the top of the candle. And then using the techniques we've covered already, just making a few tweaks to the color and the lighting. Now I duplicated my candle flame folder in case this next step didn't work. So going back into this duplicated folder, I selected the orange part of the flame, and then selected the smudge tool. I made the brush a little bit bigger and then just pushed the flame over to one side. Again, trying to simulate that same wind that is blowing the subject's clothing. Now everything's nicely organized into layers. I'm going to group the katana clothing and the samurai into a single folder now. 
and add another solid color adjustment layer. Again, with a lovely orangey yellow color and then clip this to the Samurai folder and then go and change the blending mode. This time I went with overlay and then I selected the mask, inverted this and then used the brush tool and the color white to brush in more highlights. Now it's shaping up pretty nicely. Next I'm going to go to select, all, edit, copy merged and then go to edit and paste. This will paste in a flattened version of the entire composition. I'm going to move this to the top, rename this final and then convert this to a smart object. I can now hide all of those folders below and with this selected go to filter, camera raw filter and I can now make a ton of changes here to the final design. One of my favorite things to do is go to effects and introduce a little bit of grain into my scenes. And this simulates the noise that you would typically get if you were outdoors with a camera shooting under these lighting conditions. Now to edit my scene further, I will need to hide that final layer and then show all of those original folders again. Make any changes, edit, copy merged, paste it into the smart object, save and close, and those changes are updated. So now I'm going to hide this final layer and go back into my Samurai folder add a new layer and call this hair. I'm then going to use the brush tool together with some hair brushes to add some more hair to my subject. There we go, custom hair layers added. I'm now going to add a color lookup adjustment layer and position this above my final layer. Create a clipping mask and I'm going to use this to apply a LUT to my final design. A LUT stands for lookup table and you can think of these as color profiles. They're a lot of fun to play around with so I definitely encourage you to experiment. Now this next bit is a bit of a lucky gem. I'm masking away part of the katana because the clothing underneath is actually knotted. So I'm using this to my advantage and making it look like the katana is tied up with the clothing, which is good because before it was just kind of floating in place. Now I did add some mist, but it looked terrible. Anything I'm not sure about, I put into a backup folder and I position this at the bottom and turn it off just so it's there in case I need it in future. So there we go, the design's now updated in that final smart object. I'm actually going to add another color lookup adjustment layer. This one saturates the entire composition a lot more and you can adjust the order of these in the layer stack to get different effects. Now I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer to make a few more color tweaks. In hindsight, I would have scrapped all of these adjustment layers and I would have done all of this in the camera raw filter. But anyway, what's done is done. Next, I'm going to open up an image of a lens flare in Photoshop. Copy and paste this into the main document, change the blending mode to screen and then reposition. Nice and simple. 
So for this next step, I'm going to open up an image of some leaves. I'm going to select them, cut them all out, put them in the main document and make it look like they're blowing in the wind. In the end, it didn't look great, so I actually got rid of it and did something better. But I'll leave you to watch this anyway, because who knows, maybe there's something to be learned here. I'm not entirely sure what, namely just how not to do it. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, now I have another image of some leaves. Let's open this one up and then use the lasso tool to make a selection of the leaves on the ground. Cut and paste this into the main document. And then adjust the blending mode together with all of the techniques so far to try and blend these leaves onto the rock. So there we go, it's coming together pretty nicely. I can tinker with that blending mode one more time. I went with screen in the end, and now it's back to these flipping leaves. Oh, he tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. I mean, to be fair, it could look worse, but in the end, it will look a lot better. Right, next, I'm going to open up two images, lots more leaves and some dust particles. First, we'll start with the leaves. Let's copy and paste everything into the main document. And then I'm going to position these over the rock and make a few color adjustments, change blending modes, that kind of thing basically what we did for the leaves that came before these ones, and I think these ones look a lot better. Now let's paste in the particles image, rename this particles, Make this a lot bigger so it fills the entire scene and then change the blending mode to something like lighten or screen. And with this technique you can reduce the opacity to make them a bit more subtle. And there's a few more tweaks to the exposure of the leaves here. And let's turn on these main adjustment layers one by one to see how they affect the final design. Now I ended up grabbing some pre-made leaves here. I saw this and it just had that motion blur as well. It fit the scene perfectly and it ended up looking really cool. So I'm pasting this in as a smart object. I'm then going to rotate this and increase the size so it fills the entire scene. Give the layer a name. And then I'm actually going to right click and rasterize the layer. So now I can use the lasso tool and the move tool to move certain bits around, delete other bits, and essentially reposition all of these leaves so that I'm happy. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. As you can see in the end, I went with a less is more approach and I think this looks so much better than what I was doing before. Lastly, I'm just going to make a few more tweaks to the color of the rock, namely adding a warm glow to that top edge coming from the sun.
But there we go, I think it's all come together really nicely. And after spending just a teeny bit longer on it, I ended up with the final design that looked like this. So there we go, that wraps up the video. If you enjoyed this one, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.